Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about binary fission. So as the name says binary, binary means two. Fission means to split. So fission, the term fission means to split and binary means two. So that means splitting into two parts, that is binary fission. It occurs only in eukaryotes, for example, bacteria is one of the best example. Here identical daughter cells are formed, so that means, suppose there is one parent cell, this is the parent cell, the parent cell divides to form two daughter cells. So these two daughter cells will be identical to each other as well as they will be identical to the parent cell. So all the cells will be exactly similar to each other. Even genetically they will be very similar to each other as well as to the parent. Now since prokaryotes as you all know the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So when compared to eukaryotes, prokaryotes have got a simpler structure. Therefore the process of binary fission is also quite simple here. This type of cell division is faster than the cell division which take place in eukaryotes. So when I say identical cells, so all the cells are going to be similar. So when we are going to talk about the process of binary fission, we will see that three parts play a very important role in this process. That is the nucleoid, plasmid and ribosome. So this is nucleoid. What was nucleoid? Nucleoid is that area which contains the genetic material because in prokaryotes we do not have anything like nucleus or nuclear membrane, nothing is there. So you just have one region where the genetic material is there and that region is known as nucleoid. You also have small chunks of DNA present here and there which is called plasmid. So plasmid, nucleoid and ribosomes. So ribosomes are those parts which help in synthesizing proteins. So these three parts of a prokaryotic cell play the most important role in the process of binary fission. So let us try to understand the process of binary fission. So let us look at the exact process step by step of binary fission. So the first step that takes place is DNA duplication. So what is DNA duplication? That is the amount of DNA gets doubled. So duplicating DNA or copying DNA so that DNA becomes doubled. Let us suppose this was the cell. This was the bacterial cell and this was the DNA contained in it. Now what happens when we say DNA duplication? It means the amount of DNA gets doubled. So this was the original DNA. So if you see the DNA duplicated, so the red colored DNA was the original DNA and now the same DNA is presenting twice the amount. So the yellow colored represent the duplicated DNA. So that is the first step and the most important step because if you want one cell to get divided into two, now both the cells need the genetic material, right? So the genetic material that is DNA needs to be duplicated because only if you have two sets of DNA, only then you can split the cell into two halves. Next is ribosome and plasmid duplication. Again, ribosome and plasmid also play a very important role because ribosome is required for protein synthesis. So if you do not have the required amount of ribosome in a cell, that cell will not be able to perform properly. So the amount of ribosome as well as plasmid should also duplicate. So let us suppose here, so let us suppose th these are the ribosomes present or these are the plasmids. So they should also duplicate. So here you can see that both the plasmid as well as the ribosomes have also duplicated. So DNA, ribosome, plasmid, everything needs to be duplicated. So what is the next stage? In the next step, the two DNA, the two, each copy of DNA should migrate to, diff, to opposite sides of the cell. Let us suppose this is one copy of DNA. This is one plasmid and these are the ribosomes. So similarly, the other set of DNA and uh, plasmid and ribosomes, so that is also there. So both the set of DNA 
have migrated to different sides of the same cell. So the third is DNA attached to the cell wall. So now this DNA will tend to attach to the cell wall. This is the cell wall. Now once the DNA tend to attach to the cell wall, what happens? The cell wall tends to split. So from here, the cell wall tends to split in this way. Now when the cell wall splits, it they actually form two cells. So as a result, daughter cells are formed. So how do they split? An intermediate stage comes somewhat like this. So this entire thing looks somewhat like this. This is your one cell. So this is how it splits. So gradually this split completely divides it into two daughter cells. So this is how it finally gets divided into two cells. So now if you see you started with one cell and now you got two cells which are exactly identical to the parent cell. Now please do not go by this yellow color. This should not give a question to your mind that the two cells are not similar because their colors are different. So I have just put the colors to make you understand that the same DNA gets duplicated. So there are two copies of DNA now. So one copy is taken by each daughter cell. So this is how identical daughter cells are produced. So this process is pretty simple, not too much of complication. It is just that DNA, ribosome and plasmid, everything gets duplicated and then it get the, the um, cell gets split and each of the daughter cell gets one copy of each DNA ribosome as well as plasmid. Now we also see here what happens is the DNA replication process which takes place is bidirectional, moving away from the origin towards opposite cell, towards opposite pole. Here when the DNA duplication happened, after that it is observed that the two copies of DNA tend to move away from the center. They tend to move towards the two poles. Now because of this phenomenon, the cell elongates. So if you compare this cell and this cell, this cell is far more elongated when compared to this cell. So this elongation also happens because of this movement of the DNA towards opposite poles. And as the cell elongates, the growing membrane helps in transport of chromosomes. Now, once the chromosomes have cleared the midpoint of the elongated cell, this is the midpoint. So what will happen? The cytoplasm will start to separate. Now, as the cytoplasm starts to separate, you can imagine that here a ring is there. So if you have a ring placed here, now if you keep on making the ring short, so what will happen now? Now this is the ring. Now here it is even more shorter. Gradually it will become like this and then finally it will get divided. So that is how the division takes place. It is like a ring like structure is formed at the center because of which a septum is formed and due to the formation of this septum finally two daughter cells are produced. Now this entire process of binary fission is quite fast. It is so rapid that it takes how much? Maybe approximately 20 minutes or so. And in these 20 minutes, millions of cells are produced. It is not that one binary fission, that is one cell divided to produce just two cells. Now each of them will also undergo binary fission. Right? So you started with one cell, it produced two. Now again, each of them will produce two, two cells. Now again, each of these will produce two, two cells. Again, whatever is produced, that will. So this is like an, a never-ending process. This will continue. And it is so fast that in about 20 minutes, you can actually end up producing millions of cells. So this is about binary fission, which takes place in prokaryotes. So this is how the process happens. Here we have shown the picture of amoeba. So here also if you see, the nucleus gets elongated and finally gets divided into two parts. And the nucleus separation is followed by the separation of the cytoplasm. And as a result, two identical daughter cells are produced. Let us quickly look at the significance of binary fission. What is the importance of binary fission? All organisms in a colony are genetically identical. So since here the daughter cells which are produced they are identical to each other as well as they are identical to the parent. So that means all the organisms in a particular colony will be exactly identical to each other. 
in fact this is one of the reason why uh, when when a person ha gets some bacterial infection or some bacterial disease which is caused by a particular type of bacteria in that case doctor prescribes you a drug so that drug has the ability to kill that type of bacteria so a drug that kills one bacteria of a specific type it will also kill all other members of that clone it comes in contact with let us suppose the bacterial infection which you which is bothering you is because of a type of bacteria x so the doctor gave you a drug so that drug kills any bacteria it is not only that particular bacteria of x type it is any bacteria which is of the type x will be killed by that drug and that is why you get rid of the infection once you take that medicine because it is not only effective for one particular bacteria but it is effective for all bacteria of that particular colony and that is because all the bacteria of a particular clone are genetically identical to each other thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.